Singapore laksa is much more unique compared to laksa from other country. In Singapore, I would say it's um, the coconut milk. For me, it's actually the cockles. Chili spice that goes into it. Spicy, saltiness, and it's super flavorful. And also how you can taste the different types of flavors within the dish. When I have Singaporean laksa, I feel like I have health in a bowl. Singaporean laksa, yummy. The soup, the broth, the gravy, just all of that into one is just perfect. There are many different styles of laksa, but here in Singapore, there's one that's particularly well loved, and that is Katong laksa. So I've come to this area of Singapore called Katong for one of the city's most famous laksas. The founder of Katong laksa is Ms. Nancy Ko. Now, Nancy took me into the kitchen to share with me the secrets that make a great Katong laksa. Is this, do you think that's like a secret flavor? Does that give some extra flavor, the cockle? Uh, Everyone we spoke to said the cockles make it special. And are they cooked or are they? Yeah, they can cook together. Very small, uh -huh. no, see, so much soy, so they cook. Oh, this one is the laksa leaf. Uh-huh. Yeah, just put it on top. She's amazing, huh? <laughs> you must be an expert to make the like, good laksa. <laughs> She's the queen already. Queen of laksa. <laughs> the queen of laksa. <laughs> I love it. Oh, wow. What a cool dude! Straight up, this bowl smells amazing. It has all the bits and pieces that I would be expecting. I can see the cockles there. I can see shrimp and the noodles. The noodles that have been cut up. So here they cut the noodles so you don't even need chopsticks. You just use a spoon and some dried laksa leaf there as well. What I also need is actually this. So I've been told that I need to put all of the sambal in the extra flavor, which I'm about to do right now. Oh wow, it smells so good. Let me get in here and try. Oh wow, yeah. Okay, the flavor is immediately a massive explosion. Wow, oh, it's spicy has that lovely creamy coconut broth as well. The sambal not only adds some extra spiciness, but also some extra funk from like the dried shrimp and all of the extra ingredients in that sambal. So for me, this is like a quintessential Singaporean experience. But I think if you're at home and you want to try a Katong style laksa, well then I have a recipe for you. Okay friends, I spent so much time in Singapore, not only eating Katong Laksa, but also talking to chefs and locals about how to make the quintessential recipe at home. So here we go, we're gonna do it all. The paste, the stock, the soup, the sambal. Let's do the paste first of all. I'm gonna start off with my chilies. So you need two different types of dried chili. I've got the large dried chili, which gives us the color, and the small dried chilies, which give us the heat. Now I've soaked these in some boiling water for around about 30 minutes until they're really lovely and soft. Just kind of like drain out the water, give them a bit of a squeeze. Now you can take them out and just give them a rough chop. Same with the smaller chilies. Pop them into your blender. Keep that soaking water for later because we might need it when we blend the paste. And now the shrimp paste. I think the shrimp paste really gives your laksa that very authentic taste, the pungency, the umami. And what you need to do to get the best out of it is roast it. So wrap it in foil, pop it into a hot pan. Just keep it moving around two to three minutes. Now I know for a lot of you, shrimp paste isn't exactly like the most delightful smelling ingredient. You will enjoy the flavor more. And then take it out, unwrap it, and put it into your blender. You also want to dry roast your coriander seeds. So toast them up until they smell lovely, pop them into a mortar and use a pestle just to grind them. We need shallots. Next is gallon gallon ginger. Now, for those of you who are not completely familiar with Asian food, gallon gal is not ginger, ginger is not gallon gal. This one here is the gallon gal. It has a very pine foresty like citrus flavor. This one here is the ginger, very earthy. Both of them add different things. Seek them out and use them both in this paste. Gallon gal, ginger, garlic. The lemongrass, you do need to bruise it a little bit with the bottom of your knife, finely slice. Here we have a little bit of a substitute. Now, candle nuts typically are used in a traditional laksa paste. So I can never get a hold of candle nuts very easily outside of Singapore. These are macadamia nuts. They're gonna add that creaminess and also help to thicken up the soup. Here we have the dried shrimp, which I have also soaked in some boiling water. Just give that a rough chop as well. Pop that into the blender. Blend all of that and you'll find that your blender probably gets a little bit stuck. It'll need a little bit more liquid. So the chili soaking liquid you saved from earlier, just spoon some of that into the mix and keep blending. Open it up, spoon in some water, keep blending, do that a few times until your paste looks like this. 
lovely, smooth, smells spicy and aromatic. And here's my little trick. So I have learned to mix the turmeric in after because it makes my blender yellow. It's a simple reason. <laughs> So here we go, just mix that in. And this, my friends, is your Luxa paste. Oh, I love the smell of making this Luxa paste. You know, for me, this kind of Luxa is such a beautiful marriage of so much history and so many cultures. For me, it's a very iconic Singapore dish for those reasons. I spoke to so many people while I was in Singapore and as a food obsessed nation, they have a real love affair with the Luxa flavor. It's so iconic that you can find the Luxa flavor on pizza, ice cream, and even a Luxa bun. <laughs> there are many different ways to make sambal, many different preferences. Mine is for a very kind of like spicy yet sweet, sticky, jammy consistency. Very similar to the one that I had at 328 Katong. Now, I want to take out as many seeds as possible. The seeds kind of make the sambal bitter. So take your dried chilies that have been soaking, open them up and just use your knife to scoop out the seeds. Do the same with the fresh chilies. Take some more dried shrimp, they've also been soaking, roughly chop those, and then pop all of that into your blender with some more shrimp paste that you've roasted off in a frying pan. Add in shallots, garlic, palm sugar, oil, and then blend until it's kind of like a rough-ish kind of paste. I kind of don't mind if this one's a little bit chunky. So to cook the sambal, you want to start off with some oil, just a little bit because we do have some oil in the mix as well. You want to keep your sambal stirring, mixing, heating for around about 15 minutes. So keep that temperature at a low to medium. Ah, this smells so good. I literally had just the best time eating everything in Singapore. Bank, did we eat everything in Singapore? I love Singapore so much because you are eating so many different cultures. Chinese, Malay, Indian, even, oh my goodness, I went to some amazing like Michelin star restaurants. Bank, you certainly ate everything. Season with a little bit of salt to taste. So this is now looking perfect. A very classic sambal, something that you can use in any kind of noodle soups. Add it to a stir fry, it's really great. And it's also gonna add all the flavor that we want to our laksa at the end. Next, we're going to make a prawn broth from scratch. This is another element that if you make yourself really gives you the best authentic Katong Laksa. I have peeled these prawns, so I'm gonna use these in the Laksa later on. But what I want here is actually this. So the shells, the heads, all those bits and pieces. And you wanna fry and sizzle those shells until everything's like a bright orange color and smells really toasty. So once they look like this, beautiful color, I want you to just get your spoon in there, just kind of give it a bit of a squish. You want to extract all the flavor and now you can go in with your water. I'm using about eight cups here. Bring the stock up to a simmer and at this point you'll see there's like a whole bunch of like scummy kind of foamy stuff sitting on the surface. Use a ladle to remove as much of that as possible. Now turn the heat down to a medium. Just let that bubble away for 30 minutes. So here we are, we have a broth that is smelling very prawny in a good way. And I just want to strain that off. And again, use your spoon to kind of squish and extract more flavor from the shells. And that's the broth done. We're nearly there, stick around. Let's make our actual laksa soup. Heat up your pan, add a little bit of oil and the paste we made earlier. And another really key step to getting the best laksa is to make sure that you're giving your paste time to bloom. So give this at least four to five minutes. Keep the temperature on low. <coughs> and once you are coughing <coughs> and your paste looks like this and smells really beautiful, then you can add in your coconut milk and your prawn broth. Ah, oh, wow. Look at that color already. I'm already impressed with myself get so happy when I make these things. Okay, this is looking good. It now needs a little bit of time, but I'm also gonna add a bit of seasoning here as well. So I've got some palm sugar, some fish sauce, and some salt in here as well. Let that bubble away for around about 15 minutes just to let all those flavors make friends in there. <coughs> Ooh, it's gonna be spicy. 
For the noodles, if you want that really authentic experience, you want to go for laksa noodles. And this is what they look like, but you could use regular rice vermicelli if you can't get a hold of this thicker variety. Just add them into some hot water and give them about five to 10 minutes. Okay, so here we go. Our noodles are ready. Just give them a little bit of a drain. For the true Katong Laksa experience, use scissors to cut the noodles so that you can just scoop them all up in your spoon at the end when you're eating it. No need for chopsticks. Use your noodle cooking water to cook the remainder of your ingredients. Add your prawns in, add some cooked prawns to my bowl. Additional toppings here, which I quite like, are fish balls, fried tofu, and some bean shoots. Just warm those through in the hot water also. Now, one of the things that so many locals in Singapore told me they love about Katong Laksa is the blood cockles. 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 Crankles. All the cockles. So here we go. They typically look like this. And I've just blanched these in some hot water for about three minutes or so. And you can then open them up, just pull them out and then you have your blood cockles here. Now, these are probably difficult for a lot of people to find around the world. I'm here in Bangkok, so these are very easy to find. If you can't find them, maybe use a local clam in your area. That would be fine too. And now ladle over your beautiful laksa broth. Make sure it's nice and hot, pour it over those cockles so they warm through. And now you can add in your laksa leaf. What is laksa leaf? It looks like this. It's also known as Vietnamese mint. You can just finely slice it, add it in into your bowl. Final, final piece here, a little dollop of sambal. Okay, I wanna get in here and try this broth for you guys. Oh my goodness. Making it fresh like this is so rewarding. My taste buds are literally singing away. Okay, I'm gonna mix all this through now, mix in that sambal, mix through the noodles. And then in true Katong Laksa style, I can just scoop up a spoonful of chopped noodle and broth. The depth of flavor, everything. So amazing. Oh. I loved learning about the flavors that make a Katong Laksa unique to Singapore. And while this recipe is great, it's not gonna compare to going and experiencing the real thing. Sitting there street side among the shop houses, enjoying a true authentic bowl of Katong Laksa.